Hello, I'm Dr. Rick Green, a surgeon from Charlotte, North Carolina. It is a pleasure to introduce this wound care program developed by your healthcare team and patients and sponsored by the American College of Surgeons. The wound care program, including videos, booklet, and checklists, will teach you how to care for your wound. Use the skills checklist inside the back cover of the booklet to guide you through the steps in your care. Your feedback is important, so please complete the patient evaluation form by mail or online. I wish you all the best for your recovery. As part of your wound care, you will have negative pressure wound therapy, also known as NPWT. This video will show you how NPWT works and your daily care. It is important to review all instructions with your health care provider and make sure you and your caretaker understand all safety information before using. Negative pressure wound therapy, also sometimes called VAC therapy, is a medical device system that helps a wound heal by using suction or negative therapy. NPWT uses a foam dressing which is fitted to the size of your wound. The dressing is sealed with a clear film. A drainage tube is connected to a vacuum pump which will suction out the fluid into a canister. This helps increase blood flow to the wound area, removes excess fluid to promote healing, and provides a watertight protective seal around the wound. The types of wounds treated with NPWT include chronic wounds like diabetic, venous, arterial and pressure ulcers, amputations, wounds with excessive drainage, acute or surgical wounds at risk for infection, and first and second degree burns. Wounds that should not be treated with NPWT include wounds that have exposed blood vessels or organs, wounds that include exposed joints, and most wounds caused by cancerous skin lesions or following the removal or treatment of cancer. Necrotic wounds caused by tissue death and wounds with exposed bone or a bone infection called osteomyelitis are usually not treated with NPWT. Because NPWT requires you to do certain skills, in order to use NPWT, you should be able to understand how to use the equipment, the safety information, and the schedule for dressing changes. You need to know that the treatment involves wearing the pump at all times. The skills you will have to learn include knowing how to turn on and off the equipment, reattaching the vacuum hose, keeping the vacuum area clear so no one trips, checking your dressing for a good seal, keeping the equipment clean, knowing your alarms and how to respond, and checking for expiration dates. A medical supply company will deliver the supplies for your negative pressure wound therapy if you are receiving care at home. The supplies should include a vacuum pump or therapy unit, foam dressings, and drainage collection canisters. When your NPWT supplies are delivered, there should be an information guide with the equipment. The supplier will let you know how they can be contacted for any problems you may have with the equipment and how you can reach them if a medical emergency arises. You will have your dressing changed several times each week. NPWT dressings usually remain in place for two to three days but should be changed at least three times per week. Your health care provider will clean the wound and perform debridement if needed. Debridement is the process of removing dead tissue and should only be done by a professional. A foam dressing is cut to size and packed into the wound. It is important that the foam is fitted well into the wound and does not touch the healthy skin surrounding the wound. Small pieces of foam can grow into the healing wound and can become infected or form scar tissue if they are not carefully removed. The number of foam pieces used and later removed should be counted and recorded with dressing changes. A clear film dressing is placed over all of the foam to create a waterproof seal. 
A drainage tube is inserted through the seal and foam to drain the wound. A vacuum pump is connected to the tube depending on your level of activity. And a canister is connected to the pump to collect the drainage. When you turn on your vacuum pump, you may feel a slight pulling sensation at the wound and dressing site. Although NPWT should not be painful, there may be some pain at dressing changes, and your health care provider can help advise you how to relieve your pain. If this is ineffective or unavailable for you, it may be necessary to discontinue NPWT. Your health care provider should tell you how much activity you can have while using NPWT and if you can use a portable system. Always be sure that you have your therapy unit in a safe place where it cannot fall or be damaged. It is important that you or someone taking care of you check the device and the dressing every day to make sure the negative pressure seal is not broken. There are no kinks in the tubing. The drainage chamber is filling. The skin around the dressing has not changed. The dressing is clean and the drainage level in the canister is not full. If the therapy pump is battery operated, change the batteries when the battery indicator flashes. A low vacuum alarm will sound if the canister is full. If the tubing is kinked or blocked, or if there is an air leak around the dressing. Your healthcare professional will usually change the canister during the dressing change. Smooth the dressing and strips to ensure there is no way for air to get in and press the button to restart the vacuum pump. If the tubing is kinked or blocked, try to straighten the tubing to remove the blockage and the alarm should stop. You should be able to disconnect the tubing from the vacuum pump to take a shower or use the toilet. If you feel more comfortable with assistance, you may want to organize your shower around the days that you have a home health provider visit. Press the pause button before disconnecting the tubing. Clamp both ends of the tubing closed and unscrew the ends. Place the pump somewhere safe where it will not fall. You can shower or wash with the dressing in place, but do not soak the dressing or it may fall off. Point the end of the tubing down so water cannot enter the tube. Pat gently with a towel to dry all around the dressing and make sure it is smoothed down and has no creases that could cause air leaks. To reconnect the pump, screw the two halves back together and release the clamps. Press the button to restart the pump and a light will flash to show that the pump is starting to apply therapy. If the therapy on button is accidentally turned off, push the same button to turn the unit back on. The system should not be off for more than two hours each day. If you have recently had surgery on your heart or blood vessels or are taking blood thinners, you may have a higher risk of bleeding, whether you are using NPWT or not. If you see a sudden increase or a large amount of blood from your wound in the tubing or canister, turn off the therapy unit and do not remove your dressing. Apply pressure over the wound with gauze or a clean towel and call 911 or your local emergency number and notify your health care provider. Call your health care provider right away if you think your wound is infected or if you have any of the following symptoms. Your wound is sore, red, swollen, or your skin itches, or you have a rash. The wound area feels warm, or if you have pus or a bad smell coming from the wound. An elevated oral temperature greater than 101 degrees Fahrenheit. An infection that begins in a wound can spread through your bloodstream to the rest of your body. Call your health care provider if you have vomiting or diarrhea, feel faint or dizzy when you stand up, have a headache that won't go away, have a sore throat, have a rash on your skin, feel confused or someone tells you that you are confused have an oral temperature greater than 102 degrees Fahrenheit. Therapy dressings, 
drapes and canisters are latex free and are delivered sterile. Use these items only once and then at the end of therapy follow directions for waste disposal. It is possible to have a sensitivity or allergic reaction to other wound care products. Call your health care provider right away if you have redness, a rash or hives, swelling or severe itching while using NPWT. One of the first signs of a severe allergic reaction is difficulty breathing. Call 911 or your local emergency number if you have difficulty breathing. Check the expiration date on all parts of the equipment and do not use if they are expired. Notify your medical supplier to replace. Learning as much as you can and preparing for your wound care will help you have the best chance for a full recovery. You can use the wound booklet to review and the skills checklist, which can help guide you through dressing changes and wound care. We also need your feedback, so please complete the evaluation and let us know if this was helpful. For more information, go to www.facs.org wound care.